Wake up, Zion. 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 Out of your belly. Out of your belly. Out of your spirit. Let the cry go up. Let the cry go up. Shed yourself. This altar is open. We count. Declutter. Declutter your mind. Declutter your spirit. Declutter everything around you. open up their mouths let the preachers open up their mouths I hear the Lord he said get out the way Get out the way. That's what the Lord is saying. He said, tell my people, get out the way. Get out of the way tonight. And let me pour on you. Let me love on you. Ain't about our gimmicks. It ain't about our vocal abilities. It's not about our preach. It's not about how loud we can shout. How many tongues we can speak. He said, get out the way so I can refuel you. If your cup is empty, then lay it down so I can fill you. If you are broken, let your broken pieces down and let the spirit of the Lord mend you now. What is this? This is that what the Lord requires. A broken and a contrite heart. People whose spirit is broken to the point where they can't remember anything that is not like God. All they see is Jesus. All they know is there's God. That's what the Lord is looking for. I heard Audra when she said we're not going to fight tonight. There's no reason to fight in a holy place. There's no reason to fight in a place that has already been sanctified by God. By his people for a release. For healing. For deliverance. This is a refueling station. This is a place where you come to be refueled once a month. To go and execute greater for the kingdom of God. Don't waste your time. That's not me. 
You don't know if it's you or not because you wouldn't go beyond your limitations. Remove the barriers and let the Lord flow. What does that mean? It means you wouldn't be looking for a sermon, but you'll be looking for the face of Jesus. What does that mean? Nika, it means I wouldn't be listening for a pretty vocal, but I'll be listening for the song of the Lord. broken I need to be broken I desire to be broken to be broken uh, in his presence I want to be broken I need to be broken oh, in the presence of the Lord. Not my will but yours be done. Not my will but yours be done. Not my will but yours be done I need to be broken yes I desire to be broken I want to be broken broken in the presence of the Lord not my will but yours be done. Not my will but yours be done. Not my will but yours be done. Mama Audrey, the Lord. Is looking for that remnant who understands what it means to travail in his presence and don't get up until he speaks but the problem the master is facing with the body of Christ right now is we don't know how to tarry we don't know how to wait and labor in the presence of the Lord all we're looking for is the quick fix a shout and a holler a few goosebumps and sweat and we get up unchanged I refuse not to be broken I refuse not to be broken Cause I must be broken, I must be broken in the Lord's presence. I refuse not to be broken, I refuse not to be broken. I refuse not to be broken in the presence of the Lord. I need to be broken. 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 
I need to be broken. I need to be broken. I need to be broken. In the presence of the Lord. Somebody should be crying out. Turn the game down. Somebody should be crying out. Fix the lows on it for me. With a little reverb. What do you want from God? What do you need? from God. What is posture to receive that which you're petitioning for? I need to be broken. 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 In the presence of the Lord. Break me free. My mental stress. Break me free from my emotional roller coasters. Break me free from the spirit of running. Break me free from false expectations. Break me free. From the spirit of carnality, break me free. Lady Grant, what is going on? We're doing and we're saying what the spirit is trying to provoke you to. The Lord said tonight is different from every other night. The warfare is greater because of what the Lord is getting ready to do with the body of Christ. You cannot expect a greater move of God if you don't desire to hear his instructions and follow through. You cannot expect to remain where you are and gain more power. You cannot desire the things of the world more than you desire the things of God. Your level of spirituality must come up. It cannot remain where it is. You cannot mix with that which is unclean. 
and then lift up holy hands, we say in a holy place. We're out of our fueling station. We're at a pit stop. And for some of us tonight, if we do not allow ourselves to be lost in God, the next several months is going to drive you crazy. Get lost in him tonight. Get lost in him right now. As a matter of fact, don't even look at me. I'm not on the agenda. God is. Because I have to be broken. I must be made empty so he can fill me again. My air has to be unclogged so that I might hear what God is saying to his church. So if we're in this place tonight, we came so God could do a reforming in us. Romans 12. He says to be not conformed to this world, but I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable service. Verse 2. And be ye not con to this, but be ye by the what? He didn't say he was going to renew it. He said you renew it. So there's a daily renewing that has to take place. There's a daily restructuring that has to happen. If you don't do that, you're going to be running on fumes. And everything everybody been saying is going to make sense to you other than the voice of God. And that is my conviction. I don't want to hear what man have to say right now. I need to hear what God has to say. And the way for me to hear what God has to say is for me to get in his face, get in his word, and create a greater relationship with him. The relationship of yesterday or last month is not going to work for the way forward. The way forward requires a stripping. The way forward requires a dying or death to that which gave you strength before. So tonight, my big little sister, She said, whatever God says is what we do. So I love to walk in obedience. So I said, God, what is this? I walked in the door and it was heavy. I'm like, what is this? And these are worshipers. I said, what is this? And all I heard him say is agitate. What does it mean to agitate? To have friction. To keep at something until. And I saw periodic or spurs of agitation. 
Then I heard the Lord say, if you have to make them do it, then don't. But at this juncture, when I would have walked in that door, the glory of the Lord that is sitting in this room should have had me on my knees or on my chair to a place where I am now laying before him or crying out to him because I'm not worried about who's singing, who's preaching, who's praying, but I'm just wanting his presence so that I can be refueled, refined, and made whole while being refreshed. So Genesis 28, we all know the story very well, and it's the story of Jacob and Esau. And I want to zero in on verse 16. For the purpose of this night, and what I sense the Lord has already began to cultivate. I mean, Rabbi, I'm going to be so quiet. Let's, let's move beyond 16. Let's hear the story that the Lord least to Jacob. Prior to verse 13, there was a wrestling between Jacob and the angel of the Lord. And get relaxed. And they wrestled all night. Until the angel of the Lord got tired and he touched his thigh. But here is what I want you to hear. It says, there above it stood the Lord with the ladder. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south, all people on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land and I will leave you until I have done what I have promised. This is where I want to get. Verse 16. When Jacob arose or awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely, the Lord is in this place, and I knew him not. The Lord is in this place. Do you know? The Lord is in this place. Do you not know it? The Lord is in this place. Have you not figured it out yet? The Lord is in this room. Have you not figured it out yet? For when the Lord comes into a place, when the Lord is in his holy place, it means his subjects are doing what they should do to honor his presence. I dare you to acknowledge that the Lord is in this place.
you need. Get what you need. Get what you need. Get what you need. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Get what you need. Get what you need. The Lord is in this place. Not my will, but it must be done. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Unda ba 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 unda ba koso koto de ya ba. I feel the release of the Lord in this area right here. The release of the Lord. The release of the Lord. I surrender. I surrender. Can you give it up to Him? Nothing broken, nothing lacking. When you surrender. Listen, wow. The Lord is in this place. <laughs> ah. Jacob said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Another translation said, And I did not know. Another translation said, and I didn't even know. Another translation said, I didn't even realize. Why? Because he was so busy fighting for what he thought he was entitled to. What he thought was his. Because he was a trickster. Because he was the one doing the damage to others. He did not even know that the Lord decided to visit him. It took all night, Brian, for him to realize that the Lord, God Almighty, stepped out of heaven down into earth and desired to talk with him. And the Bible says it wasn't until he stopped when the angel of the Lord said, you know what, enough of this, let me touch you. Now that I've touched you and you begin limp, I can speak to you. Why do we always want to wait when God has to touch us for us to lose something, for us to get it together? Why do we wait for God to do the stripping? Rather than we strip ourselves. Why do we have to allow God to bring us right down to the very bottom before we recognize that the Lord is in our place? Our space. Be careful, prophets. Be careful, Levites. Be careful, singers, prophetic watchmen, gatekeepers, intercessors. 
Be careful congregants. Be careful worshipers. That we don't miss God. Do we have to come the way we think he should come? No. What if we choose to come different? Will you recognize him? What if he uses a little child? Will you recognize him? We are the burden of the Lord. Why should the Spirit keep striving with those that will not break in his presence to hear the instruction of the Lord? Why should the Lord still speak to us when he's been talking and we won't listen? This is not a message of disaster and destruction. Right here, it's a refueling, a refreshing for you as the body of believers to get your spirit in order and your life lined up so that those that will walk into the house of God, wherever you worship, wherever you praise, wherever you minister, will know that God is there because you are there. I could have had on a white dress tonight, my head tie up. It's a normal thing. But if that is what make you to believe that I am the servant of the Lord, then you lose. You lost a long time ago. The garments don't make you. You make the garments. The book don't make you. The word that comes out of it makes you. I remember getting up at four in the morning, cooking, to leave the house at five, to be in place at Mount Tabor by 5.15 to get church ready for six, have a service, transition out of that to another one, and then another one, barely ate something and had a three o'clock, then a five, and everybody said I was crazy. Didn't know that it was just a season to prepare us for what is here now. And we can't do one service. We can't get up, get our houses in order and prepare the day before because we have another agenda and God is not on it. Let me help you all wake up. The Lord is in this place. Do you know it? You're a child of God. You love God with all your heart, your soul, and your spirit. He's wherever you are. But you got to remember that God is there. And he ought to be revered. He ought to be regarded and respected. And he ought to be given his space to speak. And we listen. I am listening, Lord, for thee. What hast thou to say to me? I am listening. Master, speak, oh, speak to me. Where the shepherd leads the flock in the shadows of the, the rock. We won't be led no more. See, the sheep don't lead the shepherd. The shepherd? No, no. 
the shepherd don't lead the sheep no more. Because the shepherd goes behind and the sheep is in the front. That's how it go. Shepherd ain't in the front and the sheep behind. Because he always have to have the staff to keep him in line. So the sheep is in front of the shepherd. That's a mess. But it says, where the shepherd leads the flock. In other words, he's leading them into safety. He's protecting them from the enemy, the wolf, the thing that looks pretend or is pretend or has pretense, that which is not real. That which is camouflage. Woe to the flock that do not know the voice of the shepherd. Be careful. I am listening. Lord, for thee. Master, speak. Oh, speak to to me. I am listening. Oh, for thee. Ya ra ra ba ko se ke ba 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 na ya. What has thou to say to me? Is that your heart cry tonight? Lift your hands in there. Lift it up, lift it up. Just lift it high tonight. Just, just ask him. Just, just, just tell him, Lord, I'm listening. I'm listening. What, what has thou to say to me? What, what has thou? Come on, use it. Use it wisely. What has thou to say to me? What has thou to say to me? Come on. Let that whisper go all over this sanctuary tonight. Shh, keep it mellow. So they can hear the voice of the Lord. Come on, come on, talk to him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What has thou to say to me? Come on. Mmm. to him come on talk to him I am listening Lord for thee what has thou to say to me Know with all this true with his needs. Speak and make me blessed indeed. I am listening, Lord, for thee. Master, speak, oh, speak to me. Because where the shepherd leads the flock, in the shadows of the, the rock. The verse I love tonight, and um, it messes with me so much. It says, Master, speak and make me ready. 
when thy voice is truly heard with obedience glad and steady still to follow every word come sing that for me come on said that was for you tonight as much as you love the hymns there's something about that that speaks to where you are right now every one of us need God to speak you've got to be able to distinguish Audra right now the voice of God and the voice of the enemy The word of the Lord in Jeremiah 23 says, Woe to the shepherd that scatters the flock. Woe to him. He said, I will gather them, you know, that I have released back to myself. He said, I'm going to bring them from the various countries where they went to. But that's in my doing in my time. But to you, to you that want to scatter, go ahead. You're going to get the payment you deserve. But then there's something else greater that is coming because there's a prophecy and the greater of that prophecy is that the remnant of God will take their rightful place and they will begin to see the blessings of the Lord. They will begin to see God move in ways like it's never done before. We just can't stop at judgment because when you've already turned, God has to honor his word. And he has to bless his people. That's his word. And so we put his word to the test tonight. I challenge you tonight. We could go on and on. There's, there's something still turning in my spirit. But some of y'all got church early in the morning. And some of y'all make up your mind now that you are going to the house of God. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together with the brethren. Why? Because iron sharpens iron. You become stronger. Your fellowship with the other brother 
helps them. When you learn the needs of others. Don't take it on. Learn it so you can know how to do better. Our purpose, my assignment was simple tonight. Listen, when, just, just do this one thing. Whenever you enter into a place where you hear the clarion callers for prayer and worship and for refreshing, hit the altar. Get down, get broken, release everything that you went through that day on the altar for the Lord to work through. Do not come in and try to figure out what's happening. In a case like that, you should have been here an hour before the time. But when you come in the door, man, drop everything and just say, God, here I am. Whatever you want to do tonight, I'm open to you. So protect my mind and my spirit and everything else from any plots and plan of the enemy because I need to hear you. And I need to go in because where I've been, it's only by your grace that I'm still alive and I got my mind. Be honest with the Lord. This baby that is birthing and this baby that's about to come forth is going to come forth because there was a remnant that did not refuse not to gather to pray and to worship. The baby that has to come forth has to come forth out of travail. The baby cannot come forth if there's no travail. Not in this hour. We love to hamper on, on, on John 4, 23, 24, and going down. We want to talk about the hour coming and now is when the Lord seeking for true worshipers, those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. But he said, the hour is now, eh? It is here. We're living in that hour. The Bible says the day with the Lord is like a thousand. One day. Equal to a thousand. Come on. So, what about the hour? Do not waste precious moments. Hear me, people of God. Don't waste precious moments when you have an opportunity to come together and congregate together. More happens when we're all together than you being in a single place by yourself. We are movers and shakers. We are the ones that have been called for this last day. Shake yourself. Get rid of pride and arrogance. Get rid of it. Get rid of animosity. Hatred. Deception. Hey, the spirit of deception is around this. I mean, it is, it is wreaking havoc in the body of Christ. I'm not talking about those that are unsaved. Y'all listen to me. This spirit of deception is serious. I could be ghetto, but I don't want to go there tonight. Let's listen. The Bible says your gift will make room for you. But I will smell if you're with the, the Lord, if you've been with the enemy. Don't grab this mic. Don't pick this up. That spirit that's on you travels. And as worshipers, what essence is on us goes to those that are in our vicinity. When I open my mouth, if I have not been with God, I open my mouth and I begin to make melody to the Lord. And it is false. It doesn't go up as a sweet smell and savor. It reeks in the nostril of God. Let's be careful. In these coming hours and days that we press in and find that private time with the Lord, not just for a preaching moment, not just for a singing moment, not just because our pastors call us to prayer or to worship. Carve out your personal with him, but be mindful of your environment. Your personal time means it's you and God, not you and everybody else. When you carve that out and you develop that, you become sharper, you become better, you become stronger, and the voice of God now is so clear. That deception I spoke about is the voice, the voices that have been speaking now, is, is the, the line is so thin. 
You can't even tell if it's the false prophet or the real one. Because there's a mixture of God on the word. And then their emotions. Be careful. Not all who say God is God. But I've never seen someone who say that they're for God. Can't call on the name of Jesus. Anybody that calls on the name of the Lord, don't bring discord. They bring order. They bring wholeness. They increase love in the environment. They don't speak about the sister or the brother right in front of their face with somebody else, knowing that that person is trying to do what God called them to do. But they encourage. I'm helping us tonight. Lady, why are you laboring on this? Because the Lord wouldn't let me go, Nika. Lynn. The Lord says, if we love, it can't be a pretense because love ain't got no pretense. It's real. And if you say you love him, the love you give me should be the same. It can't be half-stepping. But it got to be real. My heart hurts and it breaks when I see worshipers and singers and dancers and prophetic watchmen that are coming up and young prophets and pastors and ministers who believe that they've already arrived. But they have not gone through anything. There are no scars. We gave, we gave you a platform and you used it for what reason? To gain momentum for yourself and God is out of the picture. Please stay broken. Please. Stay broken. It's not about us. It's about the will of the Lord. And Brian, if you had them in your mind to release them to minister, and when they come in and you sense there's no brokenness, but it's just about the opportunity, scratch them. How should he be talking like that? I'm a part of Judah. I was there from the inception. I'm just on a different island. But in this moment, I'm humbled because I've been asked to come to be able to encounter what my family has been encountering and I've been toiling and laboring between here and the U.S. But I have this burden that we don't waste the time that we have from 6.30 to 9.30, however the Lord leads it, that we don't waste it. That when we leave this place, it's all written, you know, but the Lord just given it to me that we be changed. That's what the altar was for. When he said, be broken on the altar, he said, so he can alter us tonight. Because none of us have arrived. Preaching from I was 18, almost 50. Never, I haven't arrived yet. Singing from I was a child, haven't arrived yet. Sang with the best and still ain't arrived yet. Dance with the best. Serve the greatest. Still haven't arrived yet. Let's talk about this. How much young people we done help be delivered and set free? And we still ain't arrived yet. It's not about our works. One of the things that my mother said to me years ago, don't listen to the voices of the naysayers. If you truly are a child of God, it's gonna reflect in your life living. No matter what they say, because they used to say she had me on a pedestal, Sister Audrey. Say, I could do no wrong, and I was this perfect child. I wasn't perfect. They didn't see me when I was getting cut up. They didn't see me when I was getting scolded. And when, when she would say, no, you can't go to that party. You can't hang out to that ball game tonight because you got to go to church tomorrow, and I need your spirit right because you're a young child. You gave your life to the Lord at the age of nine. I got to preserve you. Because the Lord's hand is on you. I didn't understand it until. Now that I look back, I'm glad. Because the oil that preserved me killed a lot of other people. You have a past 
to listen. God gave you a mentor, listen. But your mentor should never be greater than the voice of God in your life as your pastor. They should be saying the same thing. I'm helping you all because I believe a lecture coming out of this at some point. How is it that the voice of the mentor is greater than the pastor? Where the shepherd leads the flock in the shadows of the rock. We see what you don't see. We hear what you don't hear. If there is no pastor, then you get no instructions. And if you say God is teaching me all by himself, then something is wrong with that picture because he always assigns somebody to your life to ensure that you don't stray. Just be open for the instruction as they come. I feel a teaching moment. Hold on one second. Listen. Be careful. In the coming days, in the coming months, that you be not tossed to and fro like the Bible says by every wind of doctrine. Be careful what your ears hear and what your heart receives. The Bible says, try the spirit by spirit to spirit. Our next level in our walk with God is in the spirit realm. That's where everybody doing everything nowadays and we, we were fighting so hard to stay away from it but now in order for you to survive you gotta go in the spirit realm because there are some things that you cannot see with the natural eye singers. There are some things you can't see with the natural eye preachers. There are some things you can't see with the natural eye ushers and dancers and sound people, et cetera, et cetera. Like I can tell you all tonight that these speakers up here wasn't on and that the enemy jump inside this line. You gotta know when God wants to do something greater, he will always allow there to be friction. There will always be a greater level of warfare. If there is no warfare, check it. Every level requires, I say no new devil, a greater level of warfare. So you've been crying, oh God, make me better. God, take me, cause me to go higher and excel in this thing and cause me to walk eh, and jump over troops. Okay, warfare. Someone out of the blue, you never know, say something and you get offended. Warfare. All the time you've been doing what you were doing and nothing, and then all of a sudden, boom, warfare. You're home good, never have an argument with your wife for a long time. Then all of a sudden, you're just bickering and biting one another every day, every day, every day. Warfare, stop, shut up and pray. Give the devil no room, give him no credence. Give him no space. When you sense it coming on, shift your posture. Take the low road. Take the low. Take the low road. Because people are watching our lives. How we live. They're saying that's the Bible for us. They have stopped opening up the word. Am I helping anybody tonight? We're almost there. It's almost off my spirit. I'm grateful for you that came tonight, but let there be a change. Do not walk out of this building the same way you came. Do I have a prophetic word for anybody in this building tonight? Be altered at the altar. Be altered at the altar. Be changed. Let God be God. Let the fire of God be evident in your life when you begin to speak with new tongues and that when you begin to walk just like Peter, your shadow may heal someone. 
that deliverance would come to someone that needs it. And finally tonight, let's stand all over this building. In spirit and in truth. So will you worship? Will you bow down before our God and King? Will you love Him? Your everything. My response I will worship. I will bow down before my God and King. My everything. So will you worship? Will you bow down before the Lord and King? Mama Mashakata. Will you love him? Will you give him your heart? Not some, but everything. Your everything. What is your response tonight? What will you do? Give it to him. I will worship. I will. My Lord. Tell it to him tonight. How much do you love him tonight? And I will give my everything. Oh, I will love him. Now with the fruit of your lips, give it up. Give it up. Give him everything that's in you. Come on, release to him. Everything you had in those hidden places. Everything that you didn't want nobody else to know. Everything that had you bound. Everything that caused you not to encounter him. Everything that's been holding you back from victory. Everything that has had you at standstill. 
Cross over Jordan tonight. Let it go, let it go. Lift it up. Free yourself.